Welcome to Proven Improbable, where we focus on metals, mining, and more. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Our featured issuer is a gold junior mining company that is in the middle of its IPO listing on the TSXV. I'm speaking of Rover Metals. Joining us for a conversation is Judson Coulter, the CEO of Rover Metals. Before we begin, allow me to convey to our listeners that we are proud shareholders of Rover Metals for the virtues we will convey in today's message. Mr. Coulter, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Mr. Coulter, for first-time listeners, who is Rover Metals? Rover Metals is a Canadian natural resource exp exploration company that is specialized in Canadian precious metal resources and more specifically focused on the Northwest Territories in and around the Yellowknife area, which is the historic gold mining district in uh, the Northwest Territories. Now, Rover Metals currently is a private company, and when we last spoke in July, Rover Metals had targeted an IPO listing in the fourth quarter of 2017. Please give us an update on the listing. We are 40 days away from being called to trade. That's my best estimate at this point. Uh, we've uh, done our initial filing documents with the exchange, and we've raised uh, the minimum financing requirement uh, to be approved to be called to trade on the Toronto Venture Exchange. Now, before we get into the projects, Rover Metals completed an m and Please share the details and how will shareholders benefit? We looked at various alternatives to uh, listing of our shares on the Toronto Venture Exchange. And ultimately, we were partnered with a group with, from one of our third largest investors, which is Palisade Global Investments. And they introduced us to a group that had been very successful in seeding uh, GT Gold as well as Integra Gold. Uh, and they'd had a shell that they were looking to do a transaction with its uh, capital pool company on the NEX board of the Toronto Venture Exchange. We met the group. They, uh, they loved what we were doing. They loved the stage that Rover was at. And even though uh, there's a little bit of dilution with the 4 million shares that, uh, that is in that capital pool company, uh, we felt that we were getting long-term strategic investors that would support us, not just on the current financing, but in future financings and definitely uh, you know, investors that take a longer-term approach to investing, having, uh, again, seated in the early stages, GT Gold at the 15 cent round. So we were very happy with those discussions and we also were able to get a firm commitment uh, for a minimum investment of 600000 if we were to do a reverse takeover uh, of, their, uh, of their shell. So um, that was uh, something that we, we entered into discussions with in November and uh, really we finalized the definitive agreement uh, last week and uh, so now we're just proceeding uh, to listing. Now, since our last interview, Rover Metals has completed a financing. Share with us how this capital has been used. In the last interview, we closed our first tranche of a, of a $1 million financing. And that first tranche was uh, really just allocated to pre-planning of the exploration program. Uh, since the interview, we closed a second tranche, uh, which was through August 22nd. And we had roughly 800,000 was closed under that second tranche. Uh, the majority of that uh, was put towards a $350,000 exploration program at Uptown Gold. Uh, we also entered into uh, a strategic investor relations agreement with uh, Palisade uh, Global Investments. And the final tranche, which closed at the end of September, was for an additional 200000 to bring the financing up to about a million dollars total. Uh, and that money uh, was for some GNA and also for acquisitions, which is what we used to acquire the, uh, the Cabin Lake project. We're very excited about that, and we feel that at a minimum, it's doubled the valuation of our company. Well, speaking of the Cabin Lake Gold Project, please provide us with a brief narrative. Yeah, the Cabin Lake Project... Uh, was uh, incubated by a mining hall of famer uh, Grant Thomas and his Aber Resources today, uh, days uh, prior to the discovery of diamonds. So in the late 1980s, uh, Aber was doing uh, a lot of gold exploration drilling 
you know, in sort of the 100 kilometer radius area uh, to the west of Yellowknife. So west of the historic giant mine and con mines there. And uh, on, on route and on trend out towards uh, Fortune Minerals uh, Nico project. Yeah, so we, uh, through one of our directors, Lou Cabela, Lou had personally worked the Cabin Lake project uh, in the late 80s and early 90s for Gren. And uh, he thought it was, he remembered it being a project of merit. Uh, so we uh, we looked at it and we, we liked what we saw. It came with a historic resource uh, of 50,000 ounces, and that's a non 43101 compliant because this was under the standards at the time in the late 80s. And uh, then we we also knew that uh, there were some additional uh, claims, uh, the Camp Lake and the Sleeman Lake that were within 10 kilometers of cabin that had an additional 35,000 ounces of gold. Uh, so collectively now with uh, with acquiring all three properties, we've added uh, 85,000 ounces of gold, uh, you know, as a resource. Uh, and, you know, again, this was fairly limited exploration. So we intend to, uh, you know, drill this pro drill these three projects out, the Cabin Lake Area Group of Claims, and uh, really are looking forward to hopefully defining uh, an inferred resource uh, in this year for the company. Now, Rover Meadows has identified a, a number of zones within the Cabin Lake Gold Project. What kind of grades uh, have these zones produced? Yeah, the uh, the Cabin Lake uh, zone was, uh, you know, we had 152,000 tons grading 8.3 grams per ton. Uh, we had uh, Camp Lake was uh, 46,500 tons, grading 13.7 grams per ton. And the Sleeman Lake area, uh, 54,500 tons, grading 14 grams per ton. So high grade. Um, the holes were sh fairly shallow, a cabin. Uh, there were only 100 meter holes and they were right next to each other. And there's, a, there's an entire shelf of step out here that we know uh, is going to be mineralized and so we're really looking forward to twinning those holes and uh, extending the program. Now Judson, please tell us about the Uptown Gold Project. Yeah, well, that's uh, our project that we started the company on in the you know summer of uh, 2016. Uh, it's uh, directly uh, adjacent to the historic giant mine. It's literally in the shadow of the giant mine head frame. Uh, so we're just uh, on the west side and then to our on our northern border is Terrax Minerals and they're a you know I think today they closed at a 60 million market cap company uh, so certainly uh, in a great gold district and a proven area uh, right in the city limits of Yellowknife or right at the airport hydro lines uh, right on the property and existing roads uh, through where our drill targets uh, our existing drill locations are so great access and you know, right, right now we're uh, just in the middle of planning a uh, $80,000 IP uh, resistivity study. Uh, on the There's uh, two frozen lakes, about six meters in depth, that extend to the north of the rod zone. Uh, that's Baker Lake. And then there's another lake that extends to the north of the uh, Fox South Zone. And we, uh, while, while these lakes are frozen over the wintertime, we, we suspect uh, through the mapping program that we did in uh, Q4 of last year, in addition to pairing that mapping program with the drill results that uh, the shear zones and the strike zones that we've drilled extend right beneath these lakes. So with the resistivity work that we're planning for uh, early mid February, you will be looking to show the market that are, you know, these existing areas extend and then we're likely to do uh, some drilling um, uh, on the lake uh, you know in into those extended shear uh, uh, zones uh, before we get uh, the spring thaw. How many zones does the Uptown Gold Project have and what kind of grades have you found there? Yeah for sure let's get into that. Um, so you know we've got Right now, we've got we've got six zones identified, um, you know, and, and you know within that, there's 
uh, you know, a lot, you know, we, we've really just were able to, in the past summer, focus on two of those six zones. Um, let's get into the grades. The rod zone, we had, uh, you know, two and a half meters at 26 grams per ton, two meters at eight grams per ton, uh, half a meter at 35 grams per ton, uh, another half a meter at 33 grams per ton, and then one meter at 22 grams per ton. So, you know, we're sort of, if we're able to extend the rod zone north into Baker Lake with the resistivity study, you know, we've got a case for our open pit mine potential. Um, for the Fox South zone, uh, we've got, uh, which is, you know, to the, to the southeast of, of Rod, right next to Giant. Uh, that's right where the highway is, so you can just walk in. I think it's a five-minute walk-in from the highway. Uh, what we have there is we've got one meter at two and a half grams per ton, half a meter at five and a half grams per ton, and uh, two meters at five grams per ton and four meters at three grams per ton. So, you know, again, we're looking to, you know, that Fox South zone is, you know, roughly a, a kilometer in length and strike. And so we're trying to uh, really show the extension into the UTG lake, which is north of Fox South. It's a separate lake than what's north of Rod and really show the extension of that shear system um, we've also discovered in our drill program this summer that within each of both the Rod and the Fox South Zone, uh, we intersected new zones. So we have what, what we're referring to as a Rod West Zone, as well as a, a Fox South West Zone, which is um, you know a newly discovered uh, shear system within each of those each of those two zones. We well, have to tell you both of the grades on both projects, I should say, uh, are quite impressive. How viable are the grades on these projects? Well, I think the economics for Cabin Lake, uh, you know, I've talked very briefly with uh, Robin Goh, the CEO of Fortune, and uh, sort of, you know, talked about the history and the endowment of the area. He was familiar with the work that was done by Aver Resources, uh, and he was familiar with, with some of the mineralogy and the geology, uh, the iron band formation for a gold deposit. And he seemed to think that, you know, there was possibility for us, if, if we wanted, um, to do a deal whereby, you know, that the NECO facility could process the ore uh, coming out of Cabin Lake. And it's very much economical. I mean, what we're hoping to prove up there is a multi-million ounce uh, gold deposit. Now, based on what we know, how much is a ton of rock worth in the Uptown Gold Project and the Cabin Lake Gold Project? Well, that's a uh, that's a tough question. Um, you know, I think uh, we're let's just value this at uh, you know twenty dollars per ounce in the ground. How about that? But we don't have a resource today um, uh, to really talk about that. But uh, so, I mean, you know, we've got you know what we believe is a minimum of a million ounces there in the Cabin Lake area, but just we're not quite there yet, ready to disclose you know a formal valuation in the ground, right? Switching gears, let's visit some numbers. Tell us about the stock. How many shares do you have issued and outstanding? There's uh, 31 million shares outstanding. We've got 9.1 million warrants, so fully diluted equity, roughly 40 million. Uh, we're under our, our current uh, our current uh, financing is priced at 12 and a half cents per. That's Canadian. 12 and a half cents Canadian per unit. And that gives us a pre-money uh, market cap of $5 million Canadian. And just again, referencing back to earlier in the, in the conversation, Maurice, uh, you know, looking at public company comparables uh, for the Northwest Territories, the Northwest Territories, because it is one of the most mining friendly jurisdictions in Canada, has some of the best uh, market caps for Canadian juniors. So the, the smallest comparable in the Northwest Territories that we can really draw upon would be Terra X at $60 million. It's quite impressive. So, I mean, hopefully, uh, we'll know in, in uh, you know, I think in, in 30 or 40 days here, we'll, you know, we're looking to move our market cap uh, well north of $10 million is the goal. You know, we, we might have to change the name from Uptown to Upside. <laughs> Let me ask you this, if I may. Uh, how many options does, does management have? 
Uh, well, management has zero options, and uh, right as it stands, we're in the process of adopting a stock option plan mid next week. And uh, so, after this interview, I'm talking to our HR, and we'll be formalizing our director and officer stock option plan. That will be 10% of the fully diluted equity uh, post current financing. So, I expect that to be somewhere in the, in the range of five to six million options. Those options uh, will be allocated to the directors and officers of the company, excluding myself. Um, being a founder of the company, I, I'm going to be rewarding our, our board and our management team uh, with the options. All right. Let me ask you this as well. You've touched on it before, but just let's clarify. How many warrants do we have and when do they expire? Uh, there's 9 million warrants. Uh, they expire in two years. All right. How about change of control fees? Are there any? Well, right now, uh, change of control, no, I mean, there's no change of control fees at this point. Uh, that being said, uh, the founders, management, and the board, uh, and very close friends uh, that were seated in the, in the first two rounds trusted. Uh, you know, we control about 22 million shares uh, of the company, so certainly uh, I don't think uh, there'll be a change of control that's not uh, at least uh, a friendly takeover. All right. Is management charging any consultant fees? Uh, Ron and I, uh, starting with uh, November of last year, we both uh, drew, started drawing a salary of $5,000 Canadian a month. Uh, upon uh, consummation of the Go Public transaction, both Ron and I uh, are likely to receive a, a compensation increase, and that will be formalized uh, by our board, uh, by a compensation compensation committee which I'm not part of as well as in a you know a, an independent HR advisory firm now what assurances do we have that management won't dump the shares once you reach IPO oh, we're uh, locked up by the uh, the Toronto venture exchange uh, escrow value escrow uh, plan which is a, a, a three-year program slowly releases shares o over over three years but I'm certainly personally going to be buying up as much stock as I can as I'm a huge believer and this is a company that I've built since uh, 2016 um, we, we restarted it uh, I mean the company itself actually pre you know predates 2016 back to 2014 so myself um, uh, certainly uh, I'm not really uh, one to I'm, I'm very much long-term focused as our you know our investor base which was primarily built from friends and family up until uh, the August uh, closing of last year. What will the float be once you are IPO? I would suspect that roughly 50% of the company's shares uh, will be in the float. Um, you know, that's going to be, you know, roughly 20 to 25 million shares. Okay. What is your burn rate? Uh, right now, our burn rate, uh, excluding uh, anything to do with expir expiration and new property acquisition, uh, that'd be about fifteen thousand dollars a month. Uh, again, that will change upon consummation of this of this going public transaction, as there's a million dollars that's already been raised, um, and there will be some directors that uh, have previously been excluded on monthly fees. Um, really just a, one of our more senior directors that will also be uh, likely getting compensated with a, a monthly director fee because he is our president as well. And that, uh, that gentleman is Keith Minty. All right. And how about your G&A? Well, that's kind of covered in our burn, right? That's the 15000 a month um, at the moment. So, uh, you know, that what we do have that will get starting to get amortized into GNA once we're a public company is uh, we have roughly an $8,000 a month um, investor relations uh, contract over the next three years with Palisade Global Investments. So I guess just to round off, we could say that our burn's going to go to about 25, uh, 25000 if we include the IR work as a public company. Okay. And how about office and legal? Uh, outside of the legal work on the IPO transaction, which is what I'm 
really is a one-time expense. I expect that to come in somewhere between sixty-five to eighty thousand. Um, for it's an amalgamation transaction, which results in any uh, placements under the current financing being free trading, uh, which is why uh, why we sought out Good Legal to really make our you know again increase the marketability and have that offered to our to our investors. Um, aside from this one-time uh, legal expense, I expect our legal to be virtually zero until our next private placement, which is likely to be in Q4 of this year. Um, so, and, then we'll, and what was your other question besides legal? Uh, just office expenses. Office expenses. Uh, at the moment, uh, we we do have uh, free office space and. Uh, that's uh, just being provided, uh, you know, really through uh, some other companies uh, from some related shareholders that have given us some free office space. So the uh, we've got pretty low GNA. That's pretty good use of leverage, I must say. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Judson, let's discuss an opportunity for our listeners. Rover Metals will be conducting a financing. Give us the details. Absolutely, yeah. So we're we're raising up to five million. Uh, we again, that's talking about the pre-money uh, market cap earlier. Five million uh, pre-money market cap. Uh, we will do up to five million at twelve and a half cents. And for Canadian uh, investors, uh, that that financing has been made uh, TFSA and RSP eligible, which is uh, just some tax-free benefits. Um, as well as uh, flow through tax uh, credit eligible. Uh, so right now we've raised a million. Um, I've got commitments for another half million. So by the I think we'll by the end of or middle of February, I, I expect the financing to be at 1.5 million, and we will keep the financing open right through to PDAC in Toronto, which is the first week of March. Uh, we're, we've we've been focusing on three million of the five million being flow through funds out of Toronto, and most of those funds that we've talked to are closing their their fund the end of February, and they'll be looking to per- disperse the beginning of March. So essentially, that's where we'll be looking really to close off the five million is with the three a three million dollar syndicate of flow through funds out of Toronto. And switching gears, Judson, what keeps you up at night that we don't know about? Uh, well, <laughs> okay, you know I sleep pretty well. It's just uh, I know I have to be up at six in the morning to call Toronto, so I guess I I decide to sleep at night rather than uh, not be tired the next day, Marks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Last question: What did I forget to ask? Well, I think just near term, uh, we are presenting and we have a booth at the uh, Cambridge Vancouver Resource Investor Conference here in Vancouver. That conference uh, starts this Sunday and is at the uh, Vancouver West Convention Center. We're at booth 1041. Uh, the entire team will be on the floor and uh, it's a really good opportunity for existing investors and just people that uh, have been following us you know, through your newsletter and your video interviews and, and just uh, really through our distribution uh, network uh, to come by, meet everybody, get more technical information, our VP Exploration um, and uh, our entire technical team will be there. So uh, we're looking forward uh, to shaking a lot of hands and, and getting to know, getting tell, telling people the story. And if you're a subscriber of Proven and Probable, we highly encourage you to stop by and visit Judson and the entire team of Rover Metals. Judson, if investors want to get more information about Rover Metals, please share the contact details. Rovermetals.com. Uh, that's everything you need uh, uh, to get uh, uh, our contact information. Just uh, go to the contact page and it's all right there. And last but not least, please visit our website, www.provenandprobable.com, where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space. You may reach us at contact at provenandprobable.com. Judson Coulter of Rover Metals, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable 
is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.